if you want to go ahead and, and get us. Okay. Uh, Everyone, thanks for joining us. Um, as I mentioned before, we've got Carlos Garcia, who's the CEO of GAR Capital, good friend of ours, um, someone we've known for many years, and Carlos does really well at what he does. So I'm going to let Carlos explain exactly what it is that he does and why I reached out to him with all these Bitcoin questions and obviously wanting to share with you all. Well, thank you, Catherine, for that introduction. You're very kind. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for showing up. I know everyone is busy these days. I totally get it. It's a Tuesday. The last thing we want to do is be in front of a screen, especially at seven at night. So again, I really appreciate you guys taking the time out of your day. And again, if you're not watching it live, you know, take a look at it on the recording. I'm pretty sure you guys will enjoy it and learn a little bit. So thank you again, Catherine, for the very nice introduction. Um, as again, as you said, my name is Carlos Garcia. I'm the founder and CEO of GAR Capital. People say GAR, GAR, you know, you know, people say Coca-Cola, people say Coke, same thing. It's the same thing. It really doesn't matter. A name is just a name. But what I do for a living is I do day trading, uh, not Bitcoin, but day trading stocks and options and features commodities, uh, helping clients understand the market because it can be very, very confusing and very treacherous if you don't know what you're doing. Obviously, you know, we all want to make sure that we can profit, whether it's in real estate, whether it's in cryptocurrency, whether it's in stocks, whatever. The main idea here, guys, is that we all want to make money, right? So this is why we're here to understand Bitcoin. And I do have some experience in Bitcoin. I do own some. I will actually show you my portfolio live so you can see that, you know, I'm just not some guy who's just talking out of his behind. It's a guy who actually has uh, Bitcoin and has been invested in it for many years now. And I'll explain why I invested in it and why it is the future of money. And of course, a future of real estate uh, transactions and real estate itself. So uh, again, uh, thank you, Catherine, for inviting me here to talk to your team. So without further ado, Catherine, should I go ahead and kick us off? Sorry, I was muted. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about it, guys. Uh, Bitcoin basics for real estate agents. Now, that may not sound too intriguing, but again, just walk with me here. I'm going to go ahead and assume that everyone is a just a beginner in Bitcoin. If you know what you're talking about or understand Bitcoin even a little bit or a lot, just bear with me here. I'm going to go over the big, uh, kind of the basics of it to kind of explain to everybody so everyone's on the same page. So let's just go ahead and talk about first things first. You know, what exactly is a Bitcoin, right? That, that's kind of like, I think, the main thing where we can start. What is a Bitcoin itself? Bitcoin exactly, and I'm going to read this verbatim. Bitcoin is a fully digital currency created in 2009 by an anonymous person who goes by the name of Satoshi Nakamoto. Uh, that's the person online. No one knows who this person is, but again, it was created as being the future of money, making it easy for people to transact between peer-to-peer P2P or in between businesses and individuals without an intermediary. I'm pretty sure, as you all know, when it comes to a wire transfer, it still has to go to, you know, an intermediary bank to clear it. And of course, that takes a long time. So with anything with new technology, the idea is to become A, innovative and B, streamlined. Those are the two things you're looking for with new technology. If anyone can remember with me in the late 90s, early 80s, the advent of a cell phone, the invention of cell phones. We've had cell phones before. Obviously, they were big and bulky. Remember the Zach Morris phone from Saved by the Bell? And now what do we have? We have an iPhone. This Great iPhone, okay. are we all good? So this iPhone, for example, is an example of innovation and of course being streamlined. With an iPhone now, you could basically run your business, whether it's real estate or what have you. You can accept payments through your phone through, for example, uh, the little square thing that you put on your phone. You could swipe credit cards. You can bank on your phone. I mean, you can pretty much do anything on it. But keep in mind that 20 years ago, uh, you couldn't do those things. But again, that's progress for everybody. So again, that's what Bitcoin is. Now, again, that's just the basics. So again, it is a currency. Now, the question I get in order to kind of push us through into the next phase of what Bitcoin is, is the question I get constantly is that, well, Carlos, what is Bitcoin backed? You know, there has to be something to be backed by, right? Like it's funny money, it's not real. Okay, well, I could say the same thing here about this. This is a $20 bill. It's a piece of paper with ink on it and a picture of uh, President Andrew Jackson. Does this right now in our face that I'm, I'm throwing up to your hand, does this have any intrinsic value? So what is value itself? Value is basically 
what the other person was willing to barter or trade or put value on something, whether it's a car, real estate, anything. Again, you have buyers and sellers on anything. You need the buyer to want to take compensation for what they're selling to you and vice versa. So again, I remind you, this $20 bill is not backed by anything. Before, decades ago, before we got off the gold standard in the 70s, this used to say, backed by gold. It used to say, this was backed by actual physical gold, but not anymore. So this piece of paper here with the nice little pictures in the front and the back really is nothing. Really is not backed by anything. It's backed by the full faith and credit of the United States. Now that doesn't mean anything for someone you and like you and I, but again, in a monetary sense, if I take this $20, I can go out to eat. I can pay for a cap. I could pay for services, anything, right? Well, what Bitcoin has done in order to flip this is that this is unlimited. We print this every single day, no problem. And we put it out to circulation. And when prices go up, that's what we call inflation. When prices go down, that means deflation. As if you noticed, everything is going up in price. I'm pretty sure we can all agree, correct? If you go put gas in the pump, things are getting more expensive. That's a whole other story, but that's what it is. Bitcoin does not have that problem. Bitcoin is a fixed number of tokens or coins in circulation. So again, you can't print more. It's what we call scarce. Gold, for example, is scarce. Diamonds are scarce. Oil is scarce. You can't just find more. Yeah, you have to drill oil, but again, for the most part, it's not as accessible. So again, anything in terms of value always has something called implied scarcity. So if anyone has children here, I'm pretty sure they can understand that if someone, if one of your kids uh, likes Pokemon cards or sports cards or anything like that, that's collectible. You know, I'm pretty sure you've seen that around when it comes to toys, Beanie Babies in the 90s, if you remember. The idea was that rarity brings value. But again, something rare doesn't always mean it's worth something. It still has to have some kind of value to the opposite party or your counterparty, the person you're selling to. Another example is real estate or land. They're not making more land. Hence, the price goes up due to demand. Now, in Florida, as you guys, in Miami, Florida, prices of real estate has gone up. Why is that? Because the demand is high. But if you go to Wyoming, I'm pretty sure the demand is not the same as Miami. Miami has a lot more to offer than, let's just say, Wyoming. Miami has the weather. It has access to different, to different things to do at night. And in Wyoming, all you have is probably farmland and cows. So again, it's still the same land. One acre in, in downtown Miami would be worth a lot more than one acre in downtown in, in Wyoming. But again, it's the same land. But what's different is the implied scarcity. There's not much land to be had in Miami. There's tons of land in Wyoming. That's scarcity for you. But again, Bitcoin applies to that principle, meaning there's a fixed number of coins or a fixed number of currency, which then provides value intrinsically. But again, it's the demand of this coin or this currency that drives up the price. As Bitcoin becomes more and more adopted, more and more in the mainstream, kind of like cell phones, price will go up. Obviously, due to the accessibility of Bitcoin, where anyone could buy some, it's not that difficult to get. But if you talk about nine years ago or in 2009, in order to receive a Bitcoin, it was very difficult. But now we have brokers like Coinbase or Robinhood, where you have access to buy Bitcoin. Now, again, you do not have to buy one full Bitcoin itself in order to be an investor. I think a lot of people don't understand that. You could buy fractions of a coin in order to invest in it or even use it. So again, just like dollars have cents, pennies, nickels, uh, dimes, quarters, 50 cents, just like dollars, $1, $5, $10, $20 bills, just like the same with Bitcoin, you have fractions of it. Just like pennies and cents are fractions of a dollar, you have fractions of a Bitcoin that you can get. I'm pretty sure not everyone here just throws away their change in their house. I'm pretty sure people have a, a can of something and they, they dump their change. But we are in a paper, we're in a cashless society now, so not much cash is laying around either in order to use. So that's kind of Bitcoin itself. So I want you guys, when you think of Bitcoin, think of a currency. Now with currency, you have two options with it. You could always use it like a currency or you can use it as an investment. Today, right now, everyone that's here, you can literally invest in dollars, literally dollars. 
if you're holding money in your wallet like this or in your safe, you're an investor in dollars because you're hoping or expecting that this money will retain its value over time. But we know firsthand that that's not the case. If anyone remembers how much a car was worth 20 years ago, a Corolla, let's just say, how much 20 years ago? Maybe $10,000, maybe. Try getting a Corolla today. Corolla will probably be double that, if anything. But the car fundamentally has not changed. So that's four wheels, a steering wheel, an engine, windshield, doors, and everything. The car itself has not changed other than the technology, but is that technology in the car, whether your navigation or your radio or anything like that, is that really worth double the cost? No. The problem is that inflation or the cost of the actual, the, the actual velocity of money, meaning changing hands daily, or too many dollars currency chasing few goods increases price. That's the key is. Bitcoin in itself is almost a shelter or what we call a hedge for inflation. Another one that I think you guys would understand would be real estate. Real estate has gone up in value consistently, except in 2008 and, two, in 2007, due to the financial crisis and all that stuff, but we're not gonna get into that. But for the most part, real estate is relatively steady. You know, most people that have good jobs can afford them. Not everyone can buy a home. So again, it still, it still has scarcity value, but yet it still gains in value because you can live in your asset. So there is some kind of functionality with real estate. Bitcoin has functionality too, like we said earlier, peer-to-peer -peer transactions. I could literally buy something for you and pay Bitcoin. Now we pivot into real estate. That's where we're really here for. But I was just giving you the basics of that. What is Bitcoin? Now, again, you can check the price every day. Here's a chart on Bitcoin for the past uh, one year. If I go through the daily chart, I want to say this is one year. This is from Binance. This is back from last year. This is a rolling 52-week chart on Bitcoin. And this is priced in dollars. You can see back if you bought Bitcoin or you had Bitcoin in your wallet, back in, let's just say, I, I want to say it's one year. Yeah, October, it was trading at $14,093. So $14,000 in October could have bought you one Bitcoin. Now you fast forward it to here. We have already hit all-time highs. We're kind of falling back a little bit. Now it's worth $60,000 a coin. But what has fundamentally changed with Bitcoin? Really, what has changed with Bitcoin itself? It really just changed the world. Why did it, why did it go up in value? But again, we talked about this already, scarcity. Again, there's not more of it, but the demand is going up. So again, whether it's sneakers, whether it's Pokemon cards, whether it's real estate, demand drives the market. It's still a market. So again, this is why Bitcoin is at 60,000 within one year from 14,000, whether uh, we just got the news of, from the National Association of Realtors today that real estate year over year has gained 19% in value. I'm a homeowner as well, and I see the value of my home increasing, whether I have not done anything changed to the home. I did not add a room, I didn't even repaint the house. It's just the fact that the scarcity of the home there's not a lot of homes like mine available and the demand is so high, so many bidders, the price goes up. So it's not more of a sense of, oh, it's manipulation. It's just the free market. So that's really what I wanted to kind of get to the point there. Let me see if I can get to the next slide. Oh, here we go. I have to slide down. So let's go over the next slide here. The question is here, should I advise my sellers to accept Bitcoin? So again, here's the basics here. In order to accept Bitcoin itself, you either have to sell, have the seller transferred into dollars, USD, work with a title company that will accept the Bitcoin. I don't know how many title companies do or have a, lie, a lawyer write it up on a contract that covers all risks for Bitcoin. What are the risks? Price fluctuations, up and down. Again, five Bitcoins or, or two, uh, five Bitcoins today may not be worth the same as five Bitcoins tomorrow. So keep that in mind. At this point, most people will avoid actually paying in Bitcoin. So let's kind of deep dive in that last sentence. People will avoid actually paying in Bitcoin. Now, why is that? Is there anything fundamentally different between Bitcoin and the $20 bill I just showed you? Not really. Because with this $20 bill, how could I pay for some? How could I send Catherine $20 right now? How would I send that to her? Let's say she said, Carlos, I have something. I have this really nice blanket I want to sell you. But 
it's $20. And I say, Catherine, I'm willing to pay for $20. Should I drive to Miami from Melbourne where I am to give her $20? Well, that's gas, that's miles in my car, and that's three hours of a drive. Probably not worth it, right? Well, more likely you have new things and new technology now with the internet. We have Cash App, we have Venmo, we have PayPal. So there's many ways to send money, dollars, to the other person. Now, granted, that's a small scale item. I don't think anyone would want to pay for real estate using Venmo, Cash App, or PayPal. Am I right? I highly doubt that. We're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars you're moving. So again, maybe that wouldn't be the best thing. So Carlos, what about a wire transfer? Sure, wire transfer work. Do you know how long it takes for an intermediary bank to go through? Do you know how much it costs to do a wire transfer? Not that expensive, maybe $40 if it's domestic or $35. But guess what? I have to walk into a bank. I have to fill out paperwork, all that fun stuff. I still have to drive and do all that stuff. So does that seem very streamlined? No, I think that our technology has changed where we can change the way we pay for things. Bitcoin may not be accepted today, but if I asked you 30 years ago, would cell phones be prevalent today where everyone has one and people are banking on their cell phones, people are talking to their family overseas for free on WhatsApp on their phones? Remember calling cards? Remember when you wanted to call your family? My family's in Colombia. I'm Colombian. In order to call my family in Colombia, I had to go to the store and buy a calling card, call the 1-800 number in the back, and I had $20 worth of my card. That gave me X amount of minutes. But nowadays, I can go on WhatsApp, call my grandma. We could FaceTime each other on WhatsApp or Facebook. Technology has changed. No matter what happens, guys, technology and progress will always change. The question is, will the person, the seller, the real estate agent, the banker, will they adopt? Now, we can all agree here that a lot of people don't like change. Guilty. I'm very guilty. I don't like change. I like the same things I've always liked since I was a kid. I still eat chicken nuggets and fries and a soda. And I'm 36 years old in two weeks. That doesn't change, right? Sure, but do we progress as people? Do we accept technology? Do we embrace technology? I think it'd be kind of strange if people here didn't have a cell phone, right? How would we contact you? Does anyone here have a landline? Catherine, do you have a landline in your house? I know I don't. Absolutely oh. not. <laughs> right, but 30 years ago, you had to have a landline. You had to. I mean, are you kidding me? Like, how else would you get a phone call? You know, would you go walk to a payphone? Again, these are examples of progress changing our lives has anyone been here been to magic kingdom here i'm, I'm a disney guy anyone here disney okay disney yes. <laughs> have you ever taken the presentation called the carousel of progress it's in tomorrowland i'm a big sucker for that thing remember how we used to live in a the actual carousel was an actual show i think it lasted 10 minutes or 15 minutes and it would take you the progress from the 1900s <laughs> to the 1920s <laughs> to the 50s <laughs> To the, two th to the future or the 90s or the 80s, whatever they picked at that time. But we saw how things developed, whether it was pumping water from a pumping well or hanging clothes on the clothing line. Now we have dryers. Now we don't wash our clothes in a well. We don't get well water. We have a, a water sink. We don't even do our own dishes anymore. We, do, we have a washer machine. Again, that's progress for the most part. So the point is that Bitcoin will be accepted. Now, right now, we're in a transitional period where people are just not sure. Does that mean it will never be adopted? No. But at this time, things will be a little iffy as a technology grows. So again, the question is, should I advise my sellers to accept Bitcoin? I'm going to say yes. And the reason I say so, free publicity. And there's one thing real estate people know, salesmen people know, salesmen here, we love free publicity. We love to put ourselves out there. Imagine your block. Imagine the block or the area that you run. Even if you don't accept Bitcoin, if you say willing to accept Bitcoin, you would stand out amongst your peers, amongst your sellers. Even if they don't, even if the person says, I, I don't care about Bitcoin, you just tell the owner, hey, the idea is you accept it, we'll convert it to dollars and move on. But again, that Bitcoin banner is the same thing in the 90s by adding a dot com at the end of your company. Remember pets.com? Netscape.com, Lycos.com, Excite.com, the dot-com boom in the 90s where everyone had an online website. That was the only way you can get any kind of traction as a salesperson, as a doctor, a lawyer. You had to have a webpage. That was it. 
people would ask, what's your, what's your website? What's your website? How do I find more information? Try that today. Try to being a seller of anything and not have a website or at least a social media page. Imagine, I don't think I could do business with somebody that doesn't have a Facebook, doesn't have a website or doesn't have any kind of social media and Instagram. How would I know about their products? Tell me, right? Were they going to send me a catalog? Can you imagine someone sending you a piece of paper catalog? I mean, I am an avid online shopper. I am Mr. Amazon. I love Amazon, but I'm not going to call Amazon to place an order. I do it myself on my phone or on the computer. That's where Amazon pivoted from just being a bookseller online, just a couple of books, and they scaled their way into selling just everything you can think of. So the idea here, guys, is when you advise your sellers to accept Bitcoin, you yourself are scaling up towards technology ahead of the game before the game catches up to you. Let's keep that in mind. The next slide here. Can my, bu my buyers get a loan with Bitcoin? Yes, you can. There is, now, here's some caveats. There's startups like Unchained Capital who allow people who hold Bitcoin to borrow up to $1 million with no credit check because they have an asset and interest rates between 10 and 14%. The reason the interest rates are so high is because of the fluctuation of price, back to the chart, Look how much is fluctuated on the asset itself. Now, again, these are not long-term loans. I would not advise a buyer to do this loan long-term. I don't think anyone would, would agree that 10% loan would be smart. But again, it gives an idea, it gives help to those who need a down payment for a home and using their existing ax asset without any issues of credit checks where they're already going to get a mortgage anyways. So keep that in mind. Now, as real estate people, I'm assuming that if, you know, I'm, I'm sure I've heard this, but if you borrow money in order to get the 20% down payment, it's like an 80-20 loan or something like that. You, you guys are the experts on that. Um, for example, if you don't have the 20% down payment on your home, you pay PMI. Am I correct, Catherine? I'm muted. Sorry. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, correct. Right. So again, this is just another kind of way for someone to use Bitcoin. And again, these conversations you're going to have with your buyer, your, your sellers or your buyers is an expansion of options. The idea is to give your buyer or your seller the options. Let's just say no one sells on Bitcoin, but the fact that you know what you're talking about sets you apart. And the idea is to set, set ourselves apart from everyone else. Yeah, man, everyone sells real estate, right? It's not that difficult to find a real estate agent, but a real estate agent that knows Bitcoin, that stands out to me. While not for everyone, hardcore Bitcoin owners use services like this to get quick liquidity money without cashing in their Bitcoin portfolios. A lot of millionaires and billionaires uh, that are shareholders of their big companies, they don't go out and just cash out stock. Mark Zuckerberg doesn't sell shares when he wants to buy a car or a house. He takes out a loan against his asset, which is his shares, and then he buys whatever he wants. Why? Two reasons. Tax implications. A loan is not a taxable event. It's not income. That's number one. And number two, if he sells shares and he does it consistently, it will spook shareholders to be like, why is Mark Zuckerberg selling shares of his company? Is there something wrong with his company? Something to think about. And all those big sales have to be reported by the SEC. But if he takes out a loan against his asset, it's not reported. So again, there's two reasons why taking out a loan or getting out some kind of credit and using your asset as leverage, we know what leverage is here, real estate people, that's the key. So again, they're using that as just a bridge loan, not as a full buying a house with credit. They'll just, if anything, worst case, they'll sell their Bitcoin in order to buy. Is there capital gains tax for transferring Bitcoin to USD? Now, I'm the first to tell you that I'm no tax expert. I'm not a CPA by any stretch, but there is capital gains. Capital gains, guys, taxes, death and taxes. That's the two things in life that are for sure. And as of January 1st, 2018, the federal government considers cryptocurrency as property anyone are selling or trading Bitcoin for US dollars will be hit with capital gains tax on the amount their Bitcoins appreciated since they purchased or mined them. So again, if you bought Bitcoin at a thousand and you sold it at a hundred thousand, guess what? $99,000 profit is considered capital gains. Now, again, depending on your tax bracket, that's where you get taxed on. So again, that's something you need to speak to your prospective buyer where Bitcoin is a big deal to them. Taxes, very, very important. Next slide here. Are Bitcoin and blockchain the same thing? 
Now this is the thing that we pivot to. What exactly is blockchain? So blockchain is a little complex, but the best way to, I can compare it to is actually a ledger, a digital ledger. Think of a ledger as your checkbook. If anyone here is old school, I used to write down their debits and credits, meaning whatever they bought, their paycheck that they deposited or any checks they deposited and any checks they wrote, you know, credit and debit, your, your basic checkbook thing, ledger. Well, Bitcoin does that and works on a blockchain, which is a, a digital ledger. It's an ACH. Think of it as ACH, automated clearinghouse. So again, blockchain is a technology that keeps that information together. The great thing about Bitcoin is that the digital ledger is public to everybody. You can literally go on, I believe, to Bitcoin.com or something like that and look at the ledger and see how many people are buying or selling Bitcoin based on their address, their wallet address. It's public information and it was meant that way. It was meant to be full transparency, but yet be private. Full transparency meaning who's buying what, how many is transferring, but it doesn't say your name. It doesn't say your name. But in banking, when you do a, any kind of debit or credit, you're on a record. You're on a record. I used to work at Citibank and the same thing. I, would, as I used to work customer service and I was a banker. If I pulled up your information, I saw everything you did. Everything. Not much privacy there. But with Bitcoin, there is. So again, maybe you have a buyer or a seller who, where privacy is paramount to them. It's very, very important. Maybe a celebrity or something like that, or a high net worth individual. Bitcoin would be something that they would want. But again, blockchain is just a technology. It's more of the highway. Bitcoin is the car. That is the analogy, best analogy I can use when it comes to Bitcoin and blockchain. So again, the blockchain itself, guys, keep in mind, is a digital ledger. That's it. It's kind of like the bank, the ACH. Bitcoin is just the currency. I think a lot of people get that confused and it's very, very important to kind of underlie and kind of compare. We went over Bitcoin exactly, the main difference between an ACH transfer, there's no middleman, yada, yada. But with real estate, we know there's title companies, insurance and all that stuff. So kind of, sort of, you kind of remove one middleman to have another middleman. I, I don't think real estate will ever come to the point where you'll never need a, a title a title company, or you'll never need uh, an accountant, or you'll never not need contracts from a lawyer. That's just the name of the game. It's just property laws are just that way. But since there is no bank or government to get in the way, Bitcoin can be a great way to transfer money to purchase for purchases overseas. Foreign buyers, foreign buyers, a lot of foreign buyers in Miami, right? This is an ideal way for them to move money to the States like that. And there is no issues with ACH. There's no issues of they need to check you and they need to see who you are. Yes, money laundering can happen. Big red flag, right? Money laundering. You could probably be getting Bitcoin from somebody who's not doing something very legal. But to be fair, you could say the same with good old cash, right? If someone brings, if someone came to you and said, I want to buy real estate and he brings in $500,000 in cash, you would wonder to yourself, what does he do for a living? He's probably a drug dealer, right? And that's how messed up our society is. If you go somewhere to a Best Buy and buy a TV for $2,000 and you use cash, they're gonna look at you weird. They're gonna be like, did you know that if you buy something or even take out cash from the bank, that's $10,000 and one penny, you have to be reported to the government. We don't have that with Bitcoin. You don't. I can literally move whatever money I want to Catherine, to whoever, as long as they have an address a Bitcoin wallet address, and I have the Bitcoin ready to send to them, it'll go directly, they will receive it within five to 10 minutes. No must, no fuss, they have it. That's the progress, that's a technology for you. But again, we talked about Bitcoin is an example of fiat currency. Fiat, its value is not backed by gold or any tangible asset, but we talked about with cash. Bitcoin relies on something else on blockchain to verify transactions, which we talked about the digital ledger. The digital ledger for us as Bitcoin investors or Bitcoin users, is kind of like our Bible. It knows everything that everyone is doing. If someone who is considered a Bitcoin whale, who has a lot of Bitcoin, is moving it to dollars and selling it in cash or moving to somewhere else to a broker, we know that he's selling. We could see it. It's all record. But we don't know who it is. We just know their wallet. So again, the anonymity, anonymity from it being anonymous is very important there. We talked about blockchain here and there, the digital ledger, 
Now the verification is done very quickly with algorithms. It's a lot of math. I'm not gonna get into that. I don't wanna bore everybody. But again, the idea is the blockchain kind of gives us a sense of honesty and transparency. Yet Bitcoin is the vehicle, the car through the highway of blockchain. Again, many other cryptos out there, whether it's Ethereum, whether it's Cardano, whatever, they can use their own blockchain, their own technology, just like there's many other cars out there, Ford, uh, Dodge, GMC, Ferrari, whatever. There's tons of cars. Just like there's tons of cars, there's tons of crypto out there. Some are good, some are crap. Well, well we can get that another time. But Bitcoin, we're just going to talk about it today. So which technology will have a bigger impact on the real estate market, Bitcoin or blockchain? According to most experts, big blockchain will have a bigger impact on real estate than Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies. Here's why. Transaction speed is not a pressing problem for real estate transactions. I think we can all agree. But record keeping and middlemen are. That's the key. Particularly smart contracts and applications built on Ethereum, an alternative to Bitcoin, another crypto, will change the real estate market. So what are smart contracts? Smart contracts are contracts between two parties that are verified and stored in the blockchain. The blockchain is the highway. Now that blockchain, which cannot be hacked, can give the two people together and confirm transactions. That's the key. Now the main benefit of smart contracts is that there's no need for middlemen. It's just me, me and Catherine talking and we agree. We don't need lawyers. We don't need this. We don't need that. We're done. There's no tie, no, nothing else needed. I just send the money to her and she's ready to rock. Now again, there's the underlying faith that she will come through with the asset or unless she just runs. But again, that's why laws were written and, and contracts, right? Again, you still need a contract to go to court, but again, smart contracts, meaning buy and sell, you could still use smart contracts and the blockchain in order to things make things more streamlined and innovative. Streamline and innovation, guys, are the two things we're worried about here, are really focused on. In the future, blockchain can be used to store records. People are doing that with medical records now of a transaction all the way to the blockchain enabled MLS, to escrow inspections, titles, sales contracts, leases, and other real estate contracts can also be on the blockchain. Smart contracts have been yet hit the mainstream for real estate yet. Again, we talked about that. Cell phones 30 years ago, the internet 20 years ago. Again, guys, progress does not stop regardless if you're included or not, either in or you're left behind, that's the key. More about smart contracts. The best way to describe a smart contract is compare technology to a vending machine. Ordinarily, you would go to a lawyer or notary and pay them and wait while you get the document. With smart contracts, you simply drop the Bitcoin, a ledger, and your escrow, driver's license, whatever drops into your account. That'd be on blockchain. Moreover, the smart contracts not only define the rules and penalties around an agreement in the same way that a traditional contract does, but it'll automatically enforce the obligations. That's kind of the future of it. Again, keep in mind, if you had this kind of deal instead of paperwork in court and law offices, do you know how much paperwork the clerks have to go through? But if you have smart, it goes from this, it goes from this to this. Now, again, if you guys remember back in the 90s, how big a floppy drive was, or if you went to the library in the 80s, you had to go through the little cue cards in order to find the book you wanted. Nowadays, you have the computer. So what's the difference between the computer changing libraries and law offices and courts with smart contracts today. There is no difference. The only change is progress. That's it. So what is mining? Now it gets a little technical, I don't wanna bore you, but mining is a way in order to earn Bitcoin by unlocking Bitcoin. So again, when it comes to mining, all you're doing is using your computer to solve a bunch of mathematical equations by doing so, it burns a lot of energy in order to do that because the computer that you have running is mining and searching and unlocking Bitcoins by doing these mathematical equations. These mathematical equations are a way to keep scarcity intact. If Bitcoin was easily accessible, guys, it wouldn't be worth as much. We talked about that. So Bitcoin miners are awarded with Bitcoin for using their computer processing to verify transactions, mathematics. Before you get too excited and start mining Bitcoin out of your broker's office, not a good idea. Understand mining Bitcoin, it costs a lot of electricity, a lot. So again, you're talking about a computer running constantly, doing these, these transactions and, and actually figuring out these equations in order to unlock Bitcoin. More than likely at these prices, it would not be enough to justify the cost of mining. 
right now. So here's some of what the real estate experts say when it comes to uh, Bitcoin. A brief way to explain Bitcoin is as technology and finance had a baby. Humans survived for hundreds of thousands of years, if not longer, without money. Money is a relatively new concept to humans. True. And to think current financial system is the peak evolution of money and the storage of value is nothing short of naive. I agree. We talked about progress. Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies represent that next step in evolution of storing and exchanging value. Keep in mind, just hundreds of years ago, we were just really just bartering cattle, bartering goods and services with really not much in terms of paper money. It was all just written down. IOUs or land or cattle or, hey, I will trade you uh, some of my pottery for some cattle, something like that. You know, it's all about who needs what and I need this. And again, we've changed as we, uh, we, as we evolved as a society and as technology has grown. So again, we have a couple of people that have said some other things in terms of uh, uh, Bitcoin. Here's another one from Jim Marion. Uh, he's a Colwell banker in Colorado. The real estate industry's appetite for using Bitcoin to purchase real estate seems to be coming back in a big way in 2021. Being a realtor has helped a buyer purchase develop a land using Bitcoin converted to cash. Again, you can convert it to cash and marketed several listings willing to accept Bitcoin as payment. Bitcoin investors are finding me online and reaching out with plans to purchase a property using these funds in 2021. We talked about that. Setting yourself apart using Bitcoin. Currently, I have one Bitcoin investor looking to buy a 35-acre ranch property and have spoken to several others over the past few months about how the process and a process could successfully work for them. Quote, and smart contracts are starting to be seriously considered at least one title company in Colorado now. With their inherent security and ability to prevent wire fraud, big, there is a lot of motivation by the transaction processing entities to find new technology solutions that reduce the risk and enhance efficiency of closing process. So again, we have a lot more to speak of, but again, the gist of it is, guys, that this is the future of currency. Either you're an investor, you're a trader of it, doesn't matter. The idea is that technology is going to grow. The question is, will you adapt to it and thrive on it, or will you let it pass you by? You thank go. you, Carlos. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, oh, you're welcome. What I'm going to do here is unmute everyone and open it up yes. to Q&A. Absolutely. Um, you are excellent, Carlos. Thank you. Thank you. We really have a much better understanding. But um, everyone out there, do you have any questions for Carlos? Do you have anything you'd want to review or yeah. any questions? It was definitely very interesting. I had no clue about everything you basically mentioned. And mm -hmm. uh, and it was you know very instructive. So it's like anything that you have to digest, I guess. It takes um, time, yes. Yeah, but it's, it is very in, in, smart. And, and also um, the key factor, I, I, I always like to, to be like, able to talk and I always say knowledge is key. You know, you know, knowledge is power. I mean, whoever knows, and we see this on the media lately, whoever has owns media owns more power than everybody else. So the, the fact to learn from you, uh, I'm, I'm very grateful for this opportunity uh, because I'm pretty sure that, you know, to all of us, we can either like, uh, you know, find out more and having someone that actually, you know, has more information. So. Um, I will definitely take a lot of what you said, and if we're going to have the, the presentation to basically kind of, you know, steer the pot and use it as content to basically see where each our individual audiences is ready for this for this move. And like you said, I mean, eventually we're going to be there or with anything else similar to this, and 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 you know, money will be like you know. Money will be like you said, like the, the home phone. I was laughing because I don't remember. I think it's been like more than 10 years since I have a line. I don't remember actually. Uh, definitely. I mean, uh, I'm 36 in two weeks. I have never owned a home phone. Yeah. <laughs> never. And I've lived on my own since I was 18. So mm -hmm. I've never owned a home phone. It was always a cell phone. So yeah. again, I'm kind of a newer school. But I mean, if you show, Catherine, if you showed your kids a home phone line, they'll probably be like, what's this? <laughs> Why actually, would you use we this? We have one. We have one um, as decoration. Something that Jonathan drew there you go. a while ago. There you go. And they look at it like, okay, why do you have yeah. that there? And I'm like, you don't understand. Right. You're not, you don't have it anywhere. But um, right. or a payphone for that matter. I mean, oh how my god, you see those. Oh no, I remember. I, I remember the last day that I actually used one. It was so. It was so uh, imprinted in my memory. 
Mm-hmm. I, I've, I had forgotten my phone, my 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 myself, and I I was in the street in Coral Gables, and I literally was looking for a payphone, <laughs> and that's what I found. I mean, I says, I mean, someone mm-hmm. says, what are you looking for? I say a payphone. I mean, you know, a, they say they don't exist anymore. I say, what do you mean they don't exist anymore? I mean, and then I had to start going to a restaurant and ask for the phone to make a phone call. <laughs> yeah, you you imagine how again the, the thing is the technology. It just changes so rapidly. It's yeah. kind of hard to keep up. And I totally get that. And especially <laughs> as I got older, I mean, the TikToks of the world and odds, I don't get it, but a lot of kids use it. Just because we don't understand something doesn't mean it's not, it's not going to come. And again, we still have some people that are still old school writing checks to pay their rent and they mail it in with a little stamp. The little old ladies going to the post office to get their stuff. You know, they probably don't have a cell phone. I mean, they probably don't have a computer. But again, those individuals, the longer they wait, it's still not going to change things. Just because you don't adopt something doesn't mean it's not coming. Totally. I, I, I think that's the. I think that's what everyone has to understand. And again, I'm not saying here tomorrow, guys, only accept Bitcoin. No, no, I'm not going to say that. We're still in process of really mass adoption. We're still getting there. So what I would recommend for everyone here to, to, in order to kind of get an idea and just kind of put your hands on something, go to Coinbase and you can go on your phone and download the app. You go to Coinbase. I would recommend put $10 in Bitcoin, five, 10 bucks. Guess what? You automatically have a wallet and you're already set. So when you speak to your clients, there's one thing I understand with clients is honesty and not, I cannot sell something that I personally wouldn't use, personally. That's just how I am. Like, I couldn't recommend something that I myself don't consume. You know, for example, I've never eaten at an Arby's. So if someone asked me, hey, do you like Arby's? I'd be like, I don't know, I've never eaten there. So I can't tell mm-hmm. you it's great, I've never eaten there. If I was Mr. I hate real estate and someone came up to me and say, hey, do you think it's a good time to buy a house? I'd be like, I don't know, I hate real estate. But if you have... If you're invested in it yourself and you know something a little bit because you have it on your phone and you have a wallet, it just adds that layer of just authenticity to your client. It adds that, oh yeah, see, you're in that. So you understand. Again, the idea is to kind of connect with the person who's trying to do the things that you're trying to do. So again, here's my uh, Bitcoin. For, this is my Coinbase portfolio. I have two. So this is one you could see I have. in Bitcoin and some other ones. But again, if I wanted to send this to Catherine and Catherine has her, her uh, address, I can literally send $100. And then all I have to do is type in her email or her address. She'd get an email. Do you accept? All you have to do is do a two layer verification with Google. There's a little app called authenticator. It's just so you don't get hacked and someone stole your phone and starts moving your money away. It's just a, a I think a six digit code you'll get that changes every 30 seconds or a minute. And then boom, she'll get it within five minutes. I have literally done this many times with my good friends. I've sent them Bitcoin. I've gotten Bitcoin. The only issue, and this is where I'm going to sit, uh, kind of say something here for my services. I don't accept Bitcoin yet. The only reason why we don't accept it yet is because I have payroll for my employees and they don't want Bitcoin. So what can I do? You know, there'd be an extra step to convert it into dollars and all that stuff. So again, I'm, I'm okay with it. The issue is if I create a wallet for as a business account, I have to get that money in and then convert it to pay my guys. So again, it can be a little bit strenuous with that. True. But I, I assume as we get along, as adoptability comes along, things will get easier. But again, nothing wrong with, accept, with accepting good old fashioned U.S. dollars, right? Nothing if I sent you a thousand dollars, you'd spend it. You wouldn't just say to me, I don't want this. Of course you'd spend it, right? That's how we are. But the idea is, I think with this presentation is to make yourself stand out by saying, Hey, I'm ahead of the curve. Yes. We accept Bitcoin. And you'll tell your seller, you tell your buyer, Hey, no worries, man. If you don't want the Bitcoin, we just convert it to dollars and that's it. But again, you stand out. You seem like you're ahead of the game. You're basically the person in 1996, that has a, his own website. In 96, it was not easy to have a website. You have to create it. There's a lot of stuff. People didn't have the internet yet. But guess where we are now? If you don't have a website, a LinkedIn, an Instagram, a Twitter, a Facebook, 
No one knows who you are. Bottom line, not in business. So the idea is to put yourself out there. And when it comes to real estate selling or buying or what have you, the idea is how do I remember you? If I don't know you, I can't pay you. But hey, Catherine accepts Bitcoin. Hey, I like her. She's ahead of the game. I want to talk to her. But if you're Mrs. Rosie the Riveter, I don't know anything about Bitcoin. I don't mess with that. It just seems that you're behind the curve. And I probably wouldn't want to do business with that person, for example. Carlos, you know, just uh, just yesterday, I contacted with a title company who does do uh, transactions in Bitcoin. So, you know, it's, it, he was explaining, it's pretty easy. It's not, you know, we're getting paid. Everybody's getting paid in dollars. So yes. let's say the, the, the buyer is buying with Bitcoin that goes through the, through the title company, through a lawyer that's attached to that transaction. They convert it and the seller is getting paid in dollars. The commission, the broker is getting paid in dollars. So it's not as scary or as, mm, as we would, you know, as at least I was thinking. I had two, two clients. I just started in real estate a couple months ago. And in my very short, you know, time here i've had two people come up saying i want to do this in bitcoin can you do it and i was like uh i don't know um and the agent on the other side didn't know either so at least now we know hey yeah maybe that is a possibility let me talk to the title company let me get you guys together and at least it's it's not we're not closing doors we can actually explore them and um and finding you know title companies to work with that that have done this and that are comfortable doing it and they're as eager as we are because they, yeah. there are a lot of people coming in wanting to deal with Bitcoin. So. I think what, what the idea is, is that it's still early adoption. So not only that, sorry, but... There's, there's a background noise. I don't know. Um, anyway. Here, sorry, sorry. As- TV. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So with Bitcoin itself, again, it's relatively kind of new technology. We're still getting used to it. Um, this I can tell you for certain. The value of it is only going to go up too. So, but it is volatile, just like anything else, you know, ups and downs with a lot of traders and what have you. But it is going to go up in value because of the scarcity aspect. You can't make more of it. So again, I would not be surprised by the end of the year. Actually, this is some something I do every day. In my belief, our analysts and myself believe that Bitcoin itself will hit one hundred thousand dollars by the end of the year. Now, that may seem like oh my god, crazy. <laughs> But it really isn't because if we look at the historical patterns of Bitcoin years ago, it's following the same analog. So the issue is, here's the problem. When someone actually buys something in Bitcoin and uses his Bitcoin, his Bitcoin that he sold may gain exponentially in value. So the person actually receiving the Bitcoin is actually receiving a lot more than the buyer is, strange enough. Now, again, that's something that's a total risk because it can go down in value too. But again, that's something I believe that those who will accept Bitcoin will understand and will be very savvy about. So that's something to think about. Well, at the end of the day, there's a decision, right? There's a decision being made by the buyer and the seller. If both, sure. if both of them agree, it means that they both understand the risk. It's like if, you, if I buy a house with a, a Coca-Cola or you know, Tesla stocks, I mean, right. there's still a risk. You, know, you don't control the market. The market has a life of its own. So I, will, I mean, the important thing, in my opinion, is first of all, the information that you have, you, I'm sorry, I'm getting out of here. It's the okay. information that you have given us. Second of all, is what Kat just mentioned about the, the title companies that are able, that are like willing to, to actually work on that. Because if the buyer and the sellers agrees, and as far as what Catherine is saying that, you know, we, there's a title company that will pay to the parts in, in dollars, that is, <clears throat> I'm sorry, <clears throat> is their own, you know, is their own uh, opinion. So that was very, very interesting. Uh, and Kat, if you have the contact of the title company, it would be awesome. Even yeah, to do another video. Yes, we're and, and gonna definitely, do another one. Next yes. week, we'll do another one with them. Um, they're they're going to have the title company as well as, as well as the lawyers, the attorneys who represent them and are, manage the entire transaction. They said that they would literally 
for us and the brokers and the real estate agents, they'll take us, like hold us by the hands, go through the creation of the contract, take us from start to finish because they understand awesome. that we're all new at this. And the way they explained it said, listen, it's all win-win. It's really the person who's letting go of that Bitcoin who's going to take the loss because- that, well, That's what was my point, yeah. I mean, really? I mean, for the most part, sure. Um, it'd be hard for people to kind of let go of it. But again, it's an asset that they could leverage by borrowing too. So they can for a bridge loan, whatever. Funny story, I sold one whole Bitcoin to put a deposit, to put a down payment on my home. Now I still have some left, but that was the power of Bitcoin. That was an investment I made when, the, when Bitcoin itself was at 6,000. Now it's at 60, I sold at 50. So I gained in value. Obviously I used, I have to pay capital gains tax, but that itself gave me the opportunity to be a homeowner. I mean, how exciting is that? You know, at that time when I was buying Bitcoin, I was like, oh, this is just an investment. I never thought that it would help me to buy a house. But again, that's the progress of things. You know, when the savvy investor understands that there's a market for something and he's, he's very forward thinking or he or she is forward thinking, again, that's really the game changer. I would definitely be all over that title company that's saying they don't accept Bitcoin. And I think Bitcoin itself, guys, is going to set you apart from other real, real, uh, real estate agents because a lot of real estate agents are very stuck in their ways. Well, I've sold houses this way. What do I want to change? Well, you guys are hungry. You guys are ready to go for it. So I think Bitcoin should be something on the forefront. I would even add it to your business cards because that symbol is like the dot-com symbol of the 90s. It sets you apart. It says, it, it, I'm pretty sure on your, on, your, uh, on your business cards, do you guys put your Instagram name or your Facebook link? Or, oh, find me here. I mean, everyone puts their email address, right? 20 years ago, no one had an email address. Or 25 years ago, people were like, email address? What's that? Now everyone has to have an email address. What are you going to do? Mail me something? What, are, what is this? You got to email me things. I need it yesterday. I need it five seconds ago. I'm not waiting three to five business days for a packet of stuff. Just send me the PDF. But we weren't having this conversation 30 years ago. Again, that's progress for us. So again, I think this is a way for you guys to pivot yourselves to set you guys apart, to really show that, hey, this team, EXP Realty, or X, EXP Realty, right? Yeah. EXP yeah. Realty sets apart because they're innovative and they're understanding change. And again, we don't know if Coldwell Banker is doing this. We don't know if whatever name XYZ is doing this. But again, we know that you guys are willing to do step up and see the change in the world that it's coming to, which is an exciting thing. I, I'd be very excited if I were you guys, for sure. Yeah, I'd so be doing it if I was a real estate agent. Absolutely, hundred percent. Sorry, I see that somebody's. Um, we have a few people who've raised their hands. I just, sure. I, I try to unmute you guys. Can you see Mariana Pilar? Me? Yes. Okay, okay, go for it. Sorry, I'm, this is my first Zoom hosting it myself, so I'm that's gonna... okay. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll ask quickly because I, I, I'm trying to understand. Like Lola said, you know, to process all of this information. Um, this Coinbase uh, place that you are recommending us to go to and just start, yes. you know, uh, learning, I guess, is yes. that the one you recommend? Is this like a platform? Yes. Like it's a platform. Use, I don't it, know. It's yeah. a publicly traded company. So it's legit. Uh, it's a broker, just like it's TD Ameritrade, just like Citibank has a brokerage. Yeah, there you okay. go. Catherine knows. Okay. Uh, yeah. They have an app. So what I would recommend you guys is go to the app store. Download the Coinbase app, set up a free account. You don't have to buy anything, don't worry. But again, there's a lot of good stuff there. There's a lot of good info there so you can learn a little bit and then you automatically have a wallet. So again, you'll be part of that where you have the understanding yet consume the product yourself, which brings a little more legitimacy when you're talking to a client about it. Because if you don't have one, they're gonna be like, oh, where do you have Bitcoin? You'd be like, uh, I don't have Bitcoin. Legitimacy right. goes thrown out the window. But again, if you have some, or you know a little bit about it, it just adds the credibility factor. And I think when it comes to sales, credibility is everything. Credibility and honesty and transparency is so key because at the end of the day, guys, we're building relationships, we're building trust. And not only that, we want when we sell to a client, we want to sell to them again, right? When we sell their home, we want them, we want us to be, or you guys to be the first call. Hey, Catherine is my real estate person. I don't it want anyone be. else, <laughs> right? And it's a very client referral based business. And how do you do that with relationships by being transparent, honest, and forthcoming right. by showing, by showing being genuine, by being a part of this. Now, again, 
you don't have to know everything. You don't have to be so ahead of the curve when it comes to technology. The idea is, do you know the basics of what we talked about? And Catherine's gonna have this recorded so you can play this back as much as you want. Uh, but again, Coinbase has some really great stuff. They have some articles that explain it. If you actually literally click on Bitcoin when you do it, it actually explains it in a more technical aspect of it. It goes through all of it. You can set up reoccurring pur purchases. See right here, I could borrow cash against my Bitcoin. I only have, how much do I have in Bitcoin? $4,000, 4,300. I can borrow 1745 of it. I, and again, that's not income. A loan is not income. So a lot of people, a lot of wealthy people use leverage loans against their assets in order to purchase things so they don't pay tax on it. Loans are not tax, are not taxable. So this is why people do it. One quick yes. question. When you sell yes. and when you buy and sell uh, your Bitcoins, do you lose money? Is there, um, you know, like in Argentina, when you buy dollar, you buy in the blue, in the um, a blue market, like they say, and it's a different value mm -hmm. that happens in Bitcoins. If you sell. So yes, of course. Uh, here's an example. Every week I buy $50 worth of Bitcoin. Automatically, yeah. that's $50. I'm not going to blow on anything stupid on a weekend. Okay. But again, I pay myself first. That's what I do. I'm an investor first. So right. for example, here, I bought $50 worth of Bitcoin. It cost me $2 in commission. So okay. again, you probably think to yourself, God, that's, a, that's like 4%. But yeah, I have access to it. It's safe. You get what you pay for at the end of the day. You really do. I always pay for quality. Again, this is a, this is a, a brokerage I trust. It's a platform I trust. Sure, you could probably trade it for free anywhere else. But I like this. This works for me. You don't have mm -hmm. to use them. You can use something else. But again, this is what works for me. So again, yes, the value can go up and down, just like we see right here. <laughs> this is what I look at every day. This is the value of prices. And it goes up and down based on what else? Supply and demand. Just yeah. like home prices can go up and down based on supply and demand. Like the example in terms of Wyoming. Again, are their home prices going as fast as Miami? Probably not, but it's the same land, right? It's the same thing. It's a, still a house, but Miami, let's be real. There's more to do in Miami than Wyoming. It's, a, it's more of a, uh, a place that people want to be than Wyoming or Idaho or Nebraska. Miami is still Miami. That's why it costs so much. Laura, did you have a question? Um, I have a question. Yo, um... Uh, myself. Uh, look, if, for example, uh, I mean, somebody who put the property for sale and we say, okay, you accept, uh, I mean, we convince them to accept the Bitcoin. If the market, if I accept one offer in Bitcoin, if the market goes up and down, that is the things that scares me. Because if we yeah. fix Bitcoin, uh, what happened if the closing is in 60 days and the Bitcoin market go down? I mean, it's a race, no? Rowan. <laughs> I learned that today with the title company. Okay. So the Bitcoin exchange rate that, that it gets sold for, or the, the number that they'll use is the day that it goes into escrow. So that's the registered date. So let's say the Bitcoin goes to escrow on December 10th. Whatever it registered for on December 10th, that's the exchange rate that they're going to be given. Okay. 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 Well, if on like, December 11th, it's a risk. You know? It's a. It's absolutely a risk. Absolutely. But there's a risk on the home foundation cracking without inspection. Same thing. But it's uh, an escrow already. You already have. I, I, yes. Obviously, that's a very extreme scenario. But yeah. again, there's risk. I mean, okay. Uh, another kind of example. Let's say you're looking to buy the house. The person wants to buy the house, but the neighbor is absolutely insane. Has a big fight with their husband or or wife and decides to burn the house down next door, would that decrease the value of the home? Obviously, <laughs> is, that the, is that the seller's fault? No, but again, if Bitcoin falling, is that the buyer's fault? No, but again, that's why you have the escrow. The agreement is, do you have that kind of security? Now, at worst intraday, when you're doing six, uh, a 60 day escrow, I would say with, in terms of percentages, how much you can go up and down, Honestly, at max in the in, in two months is maybe ten percent up and down, if that. It, it it's not as volatile as people think. I think when people compare it to the stock market, yes, it's more volatile. But a ten percent move in sixty days, mm, I, I, that's pretty unlikely. 
more than likely it's going to be like five, five to eight percent one way or another, whether it's up or down. Okay. Well, speaking, and the, that thing, could change. the person besides the, the risk is the person who actually owns the Bitcoin, right? Well, besides that, the closing the closing has to be faster. It's like it's like a it's like a, it's like a clash, cash deal. In yes, a sense, yes. uh, you're not having all the delay. I'm sorry, the delays <laughs> of uh, of our financing. So it's it's not even sixty. It's close like close to you know you can you can really hit it. And even if you're buying a house today with no inspections and nothing, you're closing in less than thirty days. Okay, I mean, I think go. those are the those are the cases in which the I mean, of, as as everything, I think that that's why as much information as we have is as better uh, because again. One thing that I will not recommend is to, uh, and that's my personal opinion, like I always said, I allow people to take, make their own decisions. I don't wanna be liable by any way, shape or form. So if the buyer and the seller, they both agree that is something that they're interested in, I can be the facilitator, right? Like with, with the title company and all that can make the transaction happen for them. But by no means, I will say a thing because God forbid. And again, it's like buying with, for, I understand it very well now. It's like literally buying with the stock market. And I know the stock market is an investment, but it's a volatile investment that, you know, you don't know, you can wake up tomorrow and, you know, Tesla can worth nothing. But again, you know, if, you know, people that play that game and, you know, it's a game of, of, of you know, you know, I think it's a great thing. I, I'm actually super happy for this, for this webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. And you're very welcome. And again, you nailed, it, you nailed it on the head when you said that it's kind of like cash buying where it's going to be faster closing. We talked about that. Innovation, right? That was the key. We want to make real estate as painless as possible. I bought a home. It's a pain. It's a pain in the rear end. I'm being honest. I hated it. I hated every minute of it because I was going back and forth with the mortgage company, with the buyer, the real estate agent, my real estate agent, and it was a mess. And this is considered a hot market, right? And it was still a pain. But again, there's so much regulations now since the 2008 crash. We have to make sure things are good and things are right, especially if you're borrowing. But if it's a cash deal with just Bitcoin, for example, you're kind of overseeing that. You're overstepping that. You don't need that. So yes, it's true. You don't probably, the, the closing date will be a little closer, a little faster, which is a good thing if they're buying a Bitcoin because it removes more of that risk of volatility of the asset. That's the key. Again, we want speed. We want speed and we want progress. And the progress and innovation fun. includes speed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. I definitely think it's exciting. I mean, I, I just think you know, I've been in real estate for four months, five maybe, and have already been approached twice. Um, you know, and this was only in two showings of, you know, yeah, let me go ahead and pay you in Bitcoin. Look, look and they should, I have 250,000 and you, okay, wait, what? So this at least, you know, that definitely for me, it's helped me to give me clarity and some peace of yeah. mind and at least be able to walk out there and, and not feel intimidated by anyone coming in. Um, we, we are seeing a lot of Californians coming in with that and Ukrainians, international foreigners. So. Hopefully, you know, when we circle back and, you know, we'll, we'll do another session with you, Carlos, and we'll, hopefully, you know, Anytime. we'll, we'll, have, we'll have some testimonials to come back to you and, and say, you know, hopefully they're good. They're positive ones from all of us. And, you know, we'll see. We'll see where it goes. I know for next week, guys, I'm planning another webinar um, with the title company. And again, like I said, they're, they're attorneys who handle that part of the transaction. So, um, you know, it just takes us one step closer to being able to, to walk in confidence and know. A little bit more. Very, very exciting for you guys. I'm very excited for you guys. I know you guys are going to kill it. And just having that Bitcoin acceptance is going to open a lot of doors. And that's awesome. And at the end of the day, mm -hmm. that's what you guys want. Yeah. Thank you, Carlos. Very oh, thank you so much. Yes. You. I'm from Colombia too. Oh, and in three well, months, it's my, it's my 20s. In three months. Okay. There you go. Happy <laughs> birthday. <laughs> Scorpios. <laughs> I don't know. I have a personal question. Yes. Personal question. Sorry. Because yes. I wanted to know, because I wanted to, to take your friends, because maybe we'll be my clients, no? Oh, true. <laughs> uh, now, again, that's where I was telling Catherine. I was like, give me the information of your team. Those so are mine. <laughs> on, on my Instagram, we have over 138,000 followers. We have nearly 8,000 YouTube subscribers. So again, I would love to push your company so you guys can grow and kill it because I have so many clients in Florida that 
could definitely use your services. I'm a connector, man. I love it. So again, any way you guys can thrive, I'm all for it. You just guys let me know. Reach out to Catherine. Thank you. Um, Catherine's Thank great you. people. She's family to me. So any way I can help guys, please, I'm at your disposal. Carlos, you, you were actually in the midst of sending me over some Bitcoin, right? <laughs> Oh, I was. That's right. How much? No se te olvide. Well, it's closed. Sorry, it's closed. <laughs> Thank you very much for everything. You're welcome very and, much. Um, and uh, the information was absolutely incredible. Okay. Thank you. So guys thank you. So much. Thank, thank you, you both. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time.